Let's go to the Boss Firearms Hotline. That's where we find Jordan Pugh. JP, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. Did you watch some uh, college football this past weekend? I did. I got to watch it a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I was doing a lot of family things, man. So we cleaning, you know, kind of house shopping since we got the, the the next one on the way. So I had to go look for some houses, that kind of thing. But yeah, man, I got to actually, you know, be a little fan this weekend and watch some games. Can you make sense of the SEC? I think it's easy. A&M wins out. They'll take care of business, right? But can you make sense of all these teams that have like this bump? And this bump lasts a couple weeks, and then they fall off their bump. Texas had their early bump. Georgia started with a bump, fell, got another bump. Ole Miss fell, got their bump this past weekend. A&M had their bump. South Carolina bought, brought, brought them down. Just kind of talk a little bit about that, how as much as we try to put our finger on who the top team in the SEC is, it has evolved several different times. Yeah, I just think it's just the nature of the of the of the beast. We're just where we are in the SEC. When you look at it, man, the parity all over the league is great. And I think a lot of it has to do with the transfer portal. A lot of it has to do with the NIL now because you can distribute our players can be distributed all, all over the place. But when you look at this league, man, this league, there's a reason why we're the number one league when it comes to NFL players, uh, when it comes to guys playing at the next level. And they're distributed everywhere. And I just think, man, the talent is equaled out. So when you look at it, man, from week to week, like we talked about before, each week is its own season. And there's going to be bumps along the road. And I think, man, and by having this, you know, this 12-team playoff, it allows you uh, to be able to overcome those bumps in the road, uh, overcome those losses. And when you look at a league like, like we have, our league cannibalizes itself. There's We have the best talent. We have the best teams. And, man, it's just hard to win week in and week out. That's why winning is so precious. Winning is so hard to do. So, man, just looking at overall, um, it's, it's one of those things, man, where I think football has been more exciting. I think that each week you don't know what, what it's going to be. It's the greatest drama TV show uh, going right now. Uh, and, man, it's just exciting overall. And I just love the parity within the league because each week you have to bring it. And that's what you love about the SEC. You want to be amongst the best. Yeah, you want to be amongst the best. When I look at these projections, and Billy and I talked about teams that could make the, the playoffs, it's very possible the SEC only gets three teams in this playoff, while the Big Ten is yep. almost likely to get four, right? Now, the, the SEC could get four. But yep. you, you see that, and I'm like, I still think the SEC is the better conference this year, but that's going to be a lot harder to win it in this 12-team playoff world if the Big Ten's got their four. What if the ACC gets two in there? Like, I just mathematically, it, you just start looking at the, the matchups. What do you think? Is, is the ACC, or excuse me, is the SEC still the top conference? Yeah, it's got to be the top conference. When you look at the SEC, we're, we're beating ourselves. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Man, and you look at the win-loss record. Every win is not the same. Every loss is not the same. And when you look at the teams that, that are – are the games that teams are losing? Georgia, uh, Texas losing to Georgia. Georgia losing to Ole Miss. You know we lose to to South Carolina, but we losing to a, a really good Notre Dame team. When you look at it, the majority of the losses that we have are coming against our own brothers in the conference. And so you're looking at a conference that is literally just beating itself. And so when you look at um, uh, the Big Ten and the the amount of teams, there's really three teams that you can say. Are our dominant football teams, well, really two, because we don't know what Indiana is yet. But overall, our conference, man, I think one of the things that will grow uh, frustrations within the SEC is how do we manage the 12-team playoff, this being the first year, seeing how the results play out. When you have, I think it's what, eight teams within the top 25, if I'm not mistaken, if that's if that's a correct statement, you have eight teams within the top 25, you're going to, you're going to knock each other off. How do we manage that moving forward um, as far as a conference? What does Greg Sankey do? But when you look at the Big Ten, there's not as, it's not as deep of a conference. It's very, very top-heavy. Really, two teams that are truly top-heavy. When you look at the SEC, man, you can go all the way down to the mid-level teams, and they can beat anybody in the nation. Look what Vanderbilt is doing, right? So I just think it's one of those deals where – Man, the, the, the parity is there. There's a reason why everybody floods to the SEC. There's a reason why everybody wants to watch the SEC. There's a reason why everybody wants to play in the SEC. And I think that we'll have more teams than what people uh, think at the end when it's all said and done, when it's all uh, played out. Because when you look at the type of wins, when you look at the losses, and you compare that across the nation, it's hard to argue what we have in the SEC versus everybody else. Talking to Jordan Pugh here on Tech Ags Live. I'm going to read you this uh, message that came in from the Aggie kid on YouTube. Nuno, if I told you I saw the future and told you that we'd beat Auburn, but we'd win by three to seven points, would you be happy with that and say win is a win, or would you rather roll the dice and see uh, another play come out? I'm not sure if I follow the second part of it, 
But I'm gonna okay. answer. I'm gonna answer it, and then I'm gonna let you answer. Right? I'm sorry. I'm doing the reverse all of right. what I should do. <laughs> hey, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So the truth is, in the moment, I'm gonna be disappointed. They only won by three or seven, right? Because like I'm gonna see mm -hmm. the missed opportunities, and I want to dominate teams. In reality, a win on the road at a place like Auburn, where A&M has struggled, I don't care if you yeah. win by a half a point. If they by somehow Greg Sankey changes the rules, you can win by a half. I'll be happy. Just get that win and set up a de facto playoff game against Texas, and I'll roll the dice, and I'll take it. It doesn't matter how many you win by. It matters that you won. That's all that matters. At the end of the day, we're going to look at the win-loss column, right? Look, if we're looking at a team that controls its own destiny. We're looking at a team that, man, you handle your business. We're in Atlanta. <laughs> it's about as simple as that. I don't care how it's done. Just get it done. Because, man, you, I, you know, I'd rather you debate how we won after we won versus how we lost. So you, when you're looking at, at that, man, and, and let's say that does happen. Hey, congratulations to Texas A&M. We got a big one against uh, Texas the next week, and let's handle business and, and go to Atlanta. A win is a win in this moment. In November, it doesn't matter. In November, we just need Ws. That's all we need because we control our future. So how we win is irrelevant at this point. All right. Are we undervaluing the injury to Le'Veon Moss considering you've got a top five team on your schedule left? Mm -hmm. And you got to go on the road against a team that is not very good wins and losses wise, but they got a lot of talent and a place you've struggled with, because like that's your best offensive player, right? And I, mm -hmm. I, I, and as much as we believe in Amari Daniels, and I do, are we discounting the injury to Le'Veon or not? No, we're not discounting it. We understand that it's there, but I don't think it's as big of a hurdle that we have to get over as what people make it. He is a dynamic football player. He is a great football player, and he's the best offensive weapon that we have. With that being said, I think Amari Daniels gets his opportunity to shine. I think he's a guy, man, that's been undervalued. We talked about that earlier in the year. We talked about how well he's played. We talked about the 100-plus rushing yards he's had, but it's just been quietly there just because Le'Veon's been playing so well. The reason why I think that it's not as big of a loss is because we have a guy named Marcel Reed who can use his feet as well and I think when you have that when you're coming off a bye week you have another week to game plan another week to utilize his skill set um, uh, in the best possible way it opens up more of the run game so I don't think that is going to affect us as much as, as as we think we have two dynamic backs in the backfield overall the depth hurts us but man being able to add Marcel you're adding another element to the run game and I think that's why we'll be able to click we'll be able to continue to move forward we'll be uh we'll continue to strive in our run game but it does hurt Le'Veon is a hell of a player I'm not making any mistakes or bones about that but I think we have the personnel in order to, con to continue to keep this train rolling I think a healthy Chase Basantis gives me that confidence yes. about the run game the offensive yeah. line's been okay right like since his injury they've been okay uh but mm -hmm. Chase Basantis is a difference maker on that offensive line so those plays those third and shorts fourth and shorts he makes all the difference in the world, I think, for this offense. Well, look how good we've been playing with all the injuries we've had on the offensive line since game one. And now that you're getting one of your stalwarts back, man, the one thing that we've noticed has really been since that Florida game, how we've been putting the opponents away in the run game late in games from Florida to Arkansas down to LSU. And now you're adding another element back in that offense. That is huge. We need every piece now. Now we're getting down to the finish line. And the biggest thing that we talked about is finishing. Can we finish this thing off? And now getting a stalwart back, getting one of your most important pieces back on the offensive line is going to be huge. Remember, Amari Daniels is more than capable. EJ Smith is more than capable. Marcel Reed has that other element, and we already know he's more than capable. Now you're adding those pieces back on the offensive line, more continuity, better players, more push. I think, man, this really helps us. And I think that the rest of the season and the schedule that we have moving forward helps us. If we look at the the last three games, the two games that we have leading up to Texas, I think are going to be really good test for us, but it's going to allow us to be able to work some other elements within the offense too as well. Don't think for one second that coaches don't think about that and game plan moving forward. So I think there's going to be a big pickup for us. Talking to Jordan Pugh here on Texax Live, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. All right, so this weekend against New Mexico State, what do you want to see? And what is something you certainly don't want to see? Uh, first thing I want to see, defense. I want to see a shutout. And, and I know it's hard to do in this day and age, but we need to redeem ourselves from what we did against South Carolina. I want to see better tackling. I want to see our, our secondary play more aggressive. And I need to see more chaos created along the uh, defensive line. That's the first thing I need to see. Uh, special teams-wise, 
keep going. We have we have played very well this year in special teams. I want to see that and stay consistent with that. Offensively, I want to see the pass game explode. That's what I need to see. We know that we can run the football. We know that we have the element with Marcel and his feet running the football. But now we got to be able to open this thing up in the passing game. Once we do that, once we can can open up that passing game, open up those threats downfield, it is a problem for our opponents to handle now. Now that we have a mobile guy back there, we have passing. Uh, we have a passing threat plus our run game, and we're getting uh, our offensive lineman back. Those are the things that I need to see. I need to see complete and utter domination from a defensive standpoint. I need to see us excel from an offensive standpoint, especially in that pass game this week. Jordan Pugh with us here on Tech Sags Live. Jordan, I uh, I look at this team, man, and I. I want to see this. I want to see my offensive line and my defensive line play these next three games. And it starts with New New Mexico State angry. I don't know if I want my quarterback angry. I want my quarterback kind of level-headed, making. But I want to see, like, people who are just, ah, there's, like, they're so mad at what the last game felt like that these next three opponents need to feel it. I don't think angry is the word you're looking for. I think the word you're looking for is urgency. That's what I think you're looking for. I want to see urgency. When you look at urgency, man, there's a reason why we do everything. Every play matters, and everything, every play is crucial to the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is Atlanta. Right now, the ultimate goal is Atlanta. Get to Atlanta. We get to Atlanta, everything else falls in place. But I think if we play with more urgency, we play with, uh, with a relentless effort, everything will fall into place. When I look at these next three games, we are more talented than all three teams that we play. I think we're, we're, we're better uh, along the line of scrimmage. I think we have more dynamic playmakers overall than all three teams. Now the problem, uh, not the problem, but the thing that we have to do is we have to understand the urgency that comes with it. I think one of the, the best things that happened in that loss and what you can learn from that loss against South Carolina is everything is fleeting. Time is ticking, and you got to understand that the opportunities will soon fade away if you don't take advantage of it. And sometimes, man, being able to sit on that for two weeks, I think, can propel us moving forward uh, for the rest of the season. So urgency is the key word for the next three weeks. Urgency is the calling card for the next three weeks, and I think that's something that we could do. Talk to you in a week, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, man, let's do it. All right, Jordan Pugh there on the Boss Firearms Hotline.